Hi, I'm Kat and thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's video I have for you a word in Romanian, a true crime case and I will also be doing my makeup at the same time. So let's just start with the word in Romanian which is răpire. 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 Well done guys, you just said kidnapping. Now, today's case, this is a completely senseless murder, one which I can't quite wrap my head around. This case is very, very recent. I mean, the investigation is still ongoing and the suspect is already in jail, but there are still a lot of questions that we really need answers for. I don't know what happened with my skin this week, but it's so, so dry and I also have a huge zit or pimple or spot, whatever you want to call it here which is extremely painful when I touch it. Today we are talking about Athena Strand and this case takes us to Texas, United States. And we have a development right now in the search of that missing seven-year-old out of Wise County. Within the past hour, police have set up crime tape near a ditch. You can see an image there. We do not know exactly what they have found at this time or why they may be searching in that particular area. Just to give you some perspective, this search area here is about seven miles from Athena's home in Paradise. That is where the seven-year-old was last seen, according to what we know from the Sheriff's Department. We've got a crew on the way to that location right now, and they'll bring us updates. This, of course, comes after hundreds of volunteers went shoulder to shoulder through brush surrounding that child's home in Paradise on yesterday. At the time, they found no sign of Athena. Helicopters with thermal imaging weren't able to detect any human activity in that area as well. The Sheriff's Department saying two different K-19 teams did pick up a short trail, but it just circled that home then went back out to Farm to Market Road 2123. Now the Sheriff's Office says it's because of the thorough, exhaustive search efforts of the past two days involving so many different law enforcement agencies and volunteers that they can move on to what they call the next phase of this investigation. If we've checked and double checked and triple checked all of the things out in a, in a typical grid search, area like what you largely saw yesterday, then we have to keep looking, we have to keep digging and following up on every lead. Now here's what we know about what happened in the hours before Athena went missing. Let's break the timeline down for you. The sheriff tells us she got off the school bus around Wednesday 415 at her father's home. He was on his way to a deer hunting trip, so her stepmother was the only adult at the home with her. She told authorities that she got into an argument with young Athena before going to make dinner. And when the stepmom could not find Athena in the house, she says she started looking for him for her and ultimately called 911 at 640 to report her missing. They've also, we understand, have talked to all the registered sex offenders near Athena's home. They've checked security cameras. And at this point, they're asking anyone with any information about where Athena could be. Please, they're asking to call the sheriff's office or the FBI. And once our crew gets to the scene, of course, we're going to bring you up to speed on what we know from that investigation at this hour. By the way, the city of Paradise announcing today it will actually cancel its Christmas parade to keep the focus on that search for Athena. They said firefighters usually help put together that event, but they have been working obviously around the clock to help with that search for the seven-year-old. They asked anyone who planned to buy chili at that parade to support the volunteer fire department to make a direct, uh, direct donation to that department instead. On 30th of November 2022, Tanner Lynn Horner, a FedEx driver, kidnapped Athena and killed her in his delivery van whilst he was delivering her Christmas present. I think it's safe to say that this is a parent's worst nightmare. You expect a delivery driver to be, you know, just that, a delivery driver, to drop off your order and move on to the next house, right? And especially now with the Christmas season, there are packages being delivered everywhere and it's the busiest time of the year. Drivers are running around like headless chickens to get as many deliveries done as possible. But, this particular driver decided that he will just ditch his day job and instead 
turn into a cold-blooded murderer of the worst kind. And by the way, I think that by the time I'm getting the video out to you is already in the new year. So I just want to wish you all happy new year and uh, hopefully a better year than the one before. Athena Presley Monroe Strand, born on 23rd of February 2015, was so close to her favorite holiday of the year. Christmas, but she never sadly got a chance to enjoy it this year. This stunning blue-eyed seven-year-old girl loved all animals. Cats, dogs, lizards, horses, chinchillas. She loved school and all her friends in her first grade. She really enjoyed dancing and singing. She of course loved Frozen and she was just an amazing child whose favorite color was pink. Athena was born to her father Jacob Henry Strand and her mother Maitlin Gandhi. Her parents were divorced and they shared custody of Athena. She lived with her mom in Oklahoma but at the time of her death she was staying at her dad's house at 268 County Road in Paradise, Wise County, Texas ready for the holiday break and also because her mom was really dealing with some health problems. Athena's father shared the house with Athena's stepmother Elizabeth Ashley Strand and her younger siblings. Athena's mother Maitlin was supposed to pick her up from her dad's house on the 5th of December to return back home. On Wednesday, November 30th, 2022 at around 6.41 p.m. Elizabeth, Athena's stepmother, calls 911. The call was answered by the Wise County Sheriff's Office. Elizabeth reported that Athena vanished from the house and she is just nowhere to be found. Deputies were dispatched to the address and they arrived at around 6.56 p.m. followed by numerous deputies, the fire department and also the emergency services. The first responders began searching for Athena in the near freezing temperature. Deputies spoke with Elizabeth who explained that she last saw Athena inside the converted storage shed that she and her stepsister were temporarily using as a bedroom living area while Athena's father Jacob renovated the main residence next to the storage shed. On this property there is also a larger residence but this building is actually abandoned. This uh, six acre property is Jacob's and as a child he lived on the property, he grew up there and to all intents and purposes this was a really safe area it's kind of a rural location with houses spread quite far from each other with their own extensive land surrounded by forest, water and so on. So I guess you could say that this is quite remote. Elizabeth told police that she last saw Athena at around 5.45 p.m. on 30th of November when she left Athena inside the shed and told her to sort through her dirty clothing getting it ready for washing. Elizabeth then went back inside the main residence and she started preparing dinner. Around 20 or 30 minutes later, she went back outside to Athena's room to let her know that dinner was ready, but Athena was nowhere to be found. At this point, Elizabeth starts looking for Athena. She looks inside the room, but she doesn't really notice anything out of the ordinary, except that, of course, Athena is not there. So she looks around the property and without any success at 6.22 p.m. Elizabeth calls her sister and brother-in-law who lived on the Adiasan property next to Elizabeth to ask if by any chance Athena was at their house but unfortunately she wasn't there so they started looking for her themselves. Jacob, Athena's father, right at that moment was driving with his father to a deer hunting lease near San Antonio. Elizabeth at this point is calling Jacob of course because she doesn't really know what to do, telling him Athena is missing. Jacob at this point was somewhere south of uh, Fort Worth when he got the call. He tells Elizabeth to call 911 and Jacob immediately turns around and drives back to the property. He ended up arriving after the deputies were already there. An immediate extensive search of the area was conducted overnight, the next morning and the following day by hundreds of officers and volunteers, but sadly no one was able to find Athena. 
Dogs were also used in the search, but they could only track Athena's scent as far as the road circling around the house, which suggests to me that Athena never left the property on foot. On Thursday, December the 1st, the day after Athena's disappearance, an Amber Alert was issued, even though police believed it didn't quite meet the criteria for an Amber Alert, and they said that because according to some members, of Athena's family she actually had the habit of running away or disappearing but she always came back or she was always found. Now this is something that Athena's mother Maitlin vehemently denies saying that she wasn't like that. Also according to some news articles Elizabeth and Athena got into an argument after she got home from school that afternoon and at first investigators believed that she might have run away. Through the course of the investigation it was learned that FedEx delivered a package to the house during the same time that Athena went missing. Through further investigation it was found that the company Big Top Speed was the contracting company delivering packages for FedEx. Investigators were able to work with employees from Big Top Spin to determine which van and driver made the delivery and they also learned that the van was equipped with video equipment which was run by a third party vendor Velocitor. Velocitor was able to provide the video from the truck that delivered the package. An FBI employee was able to view the video and they found that the driver took a young girl in the van who was visually similar to Athena and he was seen on video talking to her in the van. This driver was identified as Tanner Lynn Horner. The van was identified as being white in color from 2019 a box van with the marking FedEx on the side displaying a Texas license plate number. The van is registered to Bog Topspin. Tanner is believed to have kidnapped Athena at the end of her driveway only 200 yards from her house. Investigators were able to locate the driver and he told investigator Joseph Oliver and Texas Ranger Job Espinoza that he had taken Athena and Athena was deceased. According to the probable cause arrest affidavit, Tanner told investigators that when he was backing up in his FedEx truck, he accidentally hit Athena with the truck, but Athena was not seriously injured at that point. However, he panicked and he got Athena into his van. According to him, Athena was alive at that time and she was even talking to him, even telling him that her name was Athena. In this state of panic after allegedly Athena telling him that she will tell her father he hit her with the van, Tanner tried to break Athena's neck to kill her. When he attempted to break her neck and it didn't work, he strangled her with his bare hands in the back of the FedEx van. Tanner stated that he strangled Athena because she was going to tell her father about being hit by the FedEx van. He never reported to Big Top Spin or FedEx that he hit Athena with a van. Tanner is an employee of Big Top Spin and is actually authorized to wear a FedEx uniform and also to drive a vehicle with the FedEx logo to deliver packages to FedEx customers who live on FedEx routes that Big Top Spin services for them. FedEx has significant control over the specific manner in which Big Top Spin and its employees and contractors deliver packages and maintain significant control over Big Top Spin and its employees. During Tanner's interview, investigators really wanted to know where Athena was, so Tanner agreed to take them to the location of her body. On 2nd of December 2022, on the edge of the Trinity River, near Boyd, Wise County, Texas, Athena's body was recovered at the location Tanner gave authorities during their interview. The location is around 15 minutes southwest of Paradise, around 6 miles from where Athena lived. Disturbing new details just released in the death of seven year old Athena Strand. This is video of where police found her body last Friday in Wise County. It is a wooded area near water and according to court documents, Athena 
was found in that water. Investigators say suspect Tanner Horner hit Athena with the FedEx truck he was contracted to drive. The affidavit says he told detectives she wasn't seriously hurt and was alive when he put her in the van last Wednesday. It goes on to say he told detectives he strangled little Athena because she was going to tell her father about being hit by the FedEx truck he was operating. We are still waiting on the autopsy report from the Tarrant County Medical Examiner to determine the manner in which she died. Like I said, investigators are not revealing too much about what happened. So basically, we only have Tanner's account of what he said happened. Although the autopsy results, as far as I know, have not been released to the public, police say that they believe Athena died within one hour of being abducted. Local police worked together with the FBI, Texas Rangers and Wise County Sheriff's Office to bring the case to a speedy end, even though two false leads sent police looking in the wrong places for Athena. 31-year-old Tanner Horner of uh, Fort Worth was arrested on December the 2nd, 2022 and is being held on $1.5 million bond in the Wise County Jail. He faces charges of capital murder of a person under 10 years old and also aggravated kidnapping. Wise County Sheriff Lane Aiken said that he and prosecutors are planning to pursue the death penalty if he's convicted. Tanner has no criminal record in Tarrant or Wise Counties and according to his social media accounts, he graduated from uh, Azel High School, he has been an Uber driver and is also a so-called musician. After his arrest, Fort Worth residents said, quote, you never know who your neighbor is. Uber said that Tanner hasn't driven on the app in months and he was also banned from the platform. Authorities searched Tanner's home, but didn't say what they really found there, if anything. Those who live in the neighborhood near Lake Worth describe it as a quiet place where neighbors usually keep to themselves. A couple of the houses are actually Airbnb rentals. Crystal Gadian lived in the area on Somerville Place Road for five or six years and she always felt safe. When she saw on the news that one of her neighbors was accused of kidnapping and killing a child, she freaked out. She didn't know Tanner, but she would see his FedEx truck parked outside his house. Another neighbor who asked the Star Telegram to keep her name private confirmed that Tanner lived in the neighborhood with his mother and his grandmother. He was always coming and going. Sometimes he would be home for a couple of weeks and then he would leave for a month. Based on his most recent posts from October 2021, Tanner appears to have recently become a father. Even though he doesn't have a criminal record, after it became public that he was involved, in Athena's death, people started searching on social media to see who this man really was. And it came to light that he allegedly raped a 16-year-old girl. She came forward right at the beginning when it happened and she was very vocal as to who raped her, but sadly people didn't believe her. She didn't report this to the police because he took advantage of her when she was actually drunk they were also doing acid together, so she didn't believe that she will be taken seriously. He would have been around 23 years old at the time. And this is more or less what we know about him. Allegedly, he's now a father and has a fiancé. And after killing Athena, he spent his time in the van to, I don't know, trying to maybe escape or, you know, not face the consequences or hope that he won't get caught. But at the same time, he would also go home to his family acting like nothing even happened. Athena's mom, Maitlin, she said that Tanner was delivering Athena's Christmas present, You Can Be Anything Barbie Dolls, when she was killed. She also said, quote, Athena was robbed of the opportunity to grow up to be anything she wanted to be. I was supposed to bring Athena back home to Oklahoma after Christmas break. Now, instead, Athena will be cremated and she will come home in an urn because I am not anywhere close to being ready to let my baby go, end of quote. This morning, Athena's mother spoke about her devastating loss. I was robbed of watching her grow up by a man that everyone was supposed to be able to trust to do just one simple task, deliver a Christmas present 
and leave. She said this was the package Horner delivered to the residents when Athena disappeared last Wednesday. It was Athena's Christmas present, a Barbie set. Tanner Horner now sits in the Wise County Jail on a one and a half million dollar bond. The sheriff plans to recommend the district attorney seek the death penalty. FedEx says they continue to cooperate fully with investigating authorities. You can read more about the arrest warrant affidavit on WFAA.com and on your WFAA mobile app. Sheriff Aiken, who has been in law enforcement for 50 years, said that this was one of the toughest investigations he'd ever been involved in. Quote, anytime there is a child that dies, it just hits you in the heart, he said. You compare that child to your own children when they were that age. It just takes the wind out of your sails. End of quote. It's on this county road in Boyd, where police found Athena Strand's body. And while this memorial is for the public. The hardest thing that a parent has to do is pick out that casket. This was much more personal. And I don't want that to be the hardest thing. I want that to be something that represents that child. Strand's funeral was Friday. It was private. Her mother sharing these pictures with us of the little girl's casket, custom made and donated by Trey Ganim of Soulshine Industries. It just turned out actually beautiful. He recently made 19 custom caskets for the children killed at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. It was really emotional for me. The color, of course, is pink, Athena's favorite. On the top of the casket, we made a beautiful princess crown. There's also Viking symbols on the front. And one of the symbols um, is father, daughter, and it's a Viking symbol. And then the other symbol is mother, daughter. Athena's father does Renaissance festivals and the first grader would often tag along. Athena had some really cool pictures with her, with her Viking. She had an ax and then she had this huge shield and, you know, uh, she was a daddy's girl. Athena was cremated after the service, and her casket will serve as a memory box for her mother, Maitland. Too often, we find ourselves focusing on the ending of someone's story. For this family, it's about celebrating who Athena was and how she lived. It's not about just painting a casket. It's about representing that loved one's life. And Athena's mother sharing with me tonight that her baby girl service was so special. Alongside a slideshow, her favorite Disney songs were played. Everyone wore pink and lots of flowers, of course. Her mom sharing with me that seeing Athena one final time was the hardest, but that she's grateful to everyone who helped her princess shine so bright. Back to you. North Texans with an outpouring of support for Athena Strand. As we show you video of the motorcycle ride and vigil honoring the young girl, they also wore that seven-year-old's favorite color, pink. Athena was abducted from her home in Wise County last week. Then two days later, police found her body this morning. The vigils continue to celebrate her life. Tiffany Liu is live in Parker County. Tiffany, people will be out there in a couple of hours. Yeah, absolutely. The vigils will continue for Athena Strand. And, you know, she may have been from a small town here in North Texas, but really her death is being felt across the state. Now, this morning, like you mentioned here in Weatherford at the courthouse, the building is, you know, the, the lights have changed to pink. You can see the tree behind me. It's in pink. It was her favorite color. So this is in honor of Athena and for her family. And now the pictures that we see of this little seven year old girl, she has the sweet smile in all of these photos. Last week after an Amber Alert, Athena was was unfortunately found dead about 10 miles from where she went missing. Police say she was kidnapped and murdered by a delivery driver who confessed and is now in custody. Now, people who we knew really Athena it. say she knew no hate. She was friends with everyone. Athena loved flowers and, like I mentioned, the color pink. And that's why so many people were gathered around the Wise County Courthouse last night wearing her favorite color. Her elementary school at Paradise ISD was also covered in pink. And yesterday, motorcyclists again in her favorite color rode in Athena's honor to raise money for her funeral. Now, most of these people didn't know Athena personally, but it is clear in Wise County she is loved. We live a mile down the road. My kids were playing outside when she was taken, so it does change everything. Nothing compares to the pain that they're going through. We will support them and we will remember Athena every time we even see pink. 
Now tonight in Paradise, there's going to be another vigil for her at 6 p.m. at First Baptist Church Cottondale. They have also set up a fund for the Strand family and money can be donated either online, over text, or even in person offering at the foyer of the church. Now this church was a place open to those who searched for Athena last week, and now it will continue to be a place of comfort in her death. Now back out here at the courthouse here in Weatherford, there will also be another vigil this morning for Athena and her family, and that begins at 7 a.m. and we're going to be here to cover it. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, that tree just beautifully lit behind you, Tiffany, with the pink. Thank you for the update. Maitlin, who lives in Oklahoma, hired Fort Worth law firm Vargis Somerset to investigate whether FedEx or anyone else should be held responsible for Athena's death. A lawsuit was filed against FedEx and Big Top Spin. According to this lawsuit, FedEx ground drivers are subject to criminal history background checks during the application process, but court records don't indicate if Tanner has a previous record anywhere else. Stated in the lawsuit is, quote, FedEx ground contracts with independent businesses that provide package pickup and delivery services using their own employees, vehicles, and equipment. The employees of these service provider companies are subject to criminal history background checks as part of the driver eligibility process, end of quote. The attorneys representing Maitlin and her family are conducting their own investigation to determine whether FedEx could have done more to prevent the tragedy. Maitlin vowed she will continue to seek justice for her daughter. Quote, I will spend the rest of my life fighting for her so that no other family will endure such unbearable pain and grief. A monster attempted to take Athena's voice but we are her voice. Screening and hiring policies must be put into place so that monsters wearing delivery uniforms don't show up on our children's footsteps, end of quote. The lawsuit also alleges that FedEx and the contracting company who hired Tanner were negligent in employing him and failed to supervise him. The civil complaint has been filed in the 271st Judicial District in Wise County, Texas and seeks more than $1 million in damages and the jury trial. The lawsuit claims that both FedEx and Top Spin companies breached the duty of care to the public in numerous ways. This includes the allegedly negligent hiring of Tanner and the alleged failure to investigate his criminal history, mental health history and prior employment. The lawsuit also claims that both companies placed dangerous persons in a position of trust and failed to supervise the suspect properly. Properly. Quotes, our thoughts remain with the family of Athena Strand in the wake of this tragedy. We are aware of the complaint filed against FedEx Ground, FedEx said in a statement. When asked about their hiring practices, a spokesperson for FedEx told Fox News Digital that its contracts for transportation, pickup and delivery services with more than 6,000 independent businesses that are committed to providing outstanding package pickup and delivery services using their own employees. The spokesperson also said that each employee is subject to a criminal background check and should we become aware of any criminal activity within our network, we work swiftly to investigate and address those incidents, including cooperating with law enforcement. FedEx ground delivery drivers have recently committed numerous assaults, rapes and murders of people across the country. In each of these cases, FedEx stated that they were appalled. In 2021, a New York delivery driver lured teenagers into his FedEx delivery vehicle and sexually assaulted them. In 2022, a FedEx driver located in Utica, New York murdered a woman on his route and burned her house to the ground. In March of 2022, a FedEx driver in Connecticut broke into a woman's home on his route and held her at gunpoint. On December 22, 2021, a FedEx ground driver in North Carolina was charged with breaking into 11 homes along his FedEx delivery route. He stole jewelry and guns were also located in the driver's vehicle. In this case, a FedEx spokeswoman addressed the media as follows, quotes, words cannot describe our shock and sorrow at the reports surrounding this tragic event, end of quote. But FedEx continued their normal business operations, even though it's clear that their efforts, if any at all, to ensure that they are not putting dangerous people in a position of trust, even wearing FedEx uniforms, driving FedEx branded vehicles, is essentially representing FedEx and sending them 
to the doorsteps of the homes of nearly every person in America is utterly inadequate to avoid endangering the public. Well, more than a week after her death, people are keeping Athena Strand's memory alive. Yesterday in Wise County, there was a memorial ride for the seven-year-old. About a thousand people on motorcycles traveled along Highway 199 through Springtown. You can see it here. Proceeds from this ride will benefit Athena's family. Now, Athena's death caused some backlash for delivery drivers across the country and even here in North Texas. Many saying there is a new level of mistrust after police say that Athena was abducted and killed by a FedEx driver. Cleo Green is with us this morning in Studio Cleo. Now, there is a social movement happening to help people regain confidence in these drivers. Right, Kara. We are seeing delivery drivers across the country and right here at home taking to social media, posting messages for parents, especially on TikTok, like this one that's been viewed more than 9 million times from a FedEx driver saying protect them at all costs. She did not deserve that, referring to little Athena. Athena, as a father and a beautiful boy and girl, your babies are safe on my route. Now, we got a chance to speak to a major contractor here in North Texas that said, listen, we are dealing with some mistrust and this is how we feel. Take a listen. We've had drivers been called murderers over rain cameras. Children have ran away from us in fear. Um, it just, they're all scared. They're very, very scared. Um, the drivers even from all over have been saying, you know, that kids have came up to them and said, why did you do this? Or we can't trust you anymore. Listen, drivers from UPS, FedEx and Amazon and more are sharing their own grief on social media and pleading to be vigilant uh, to keep anything like Athena's murder from ever happening again. They want parents to trust them in a way that hashtag your babies are safe on my route has sort of turned into a campaign. Some delivery drivers say to build trust, which some believe is slowly working now as for the suspect Tanner Horner he is still behind bars this morning a lot of questions need to be answered an update here a FedEx contractor has yet to answer employment questions about the murder suspect so like I said uh, Mark Hara still a lot of questions that need to be answered I'll send it back to you Maitlin previously shared the heartbreaking video on Facebook revealing how her younger daughter Rye kept crying after Athena left to spend time with her father and stepmother. She was set to return to her mother and sister in Comanche, Oklahoma for Christmas. The video was recorded on November 27th, just days before Athena was first reported missing on November 30th. She was found dead on December the 2nd. Maitlin said, quote, I keep telling her it's okay, we will see CC soon, not knowing how twisted our lives would become. I took it because she does this anytime she thinks CC is going somewhere without her. End of quote. Eventually, Rai, Athena's sister, cried herself to sleep. <coughs> In a post, Maitlin wrote, quote, Daddy and Mommy were scared of how beautiful she always she has always been and we feel like we failed you. No one deserves what happened to you, but especially you. I love you and love doesn't even cover it. Mommy is broken without you. End of quote. She went on to describe her angel as innocent, beautiful, kind, intelligent and just the brightest, happiest soul you could ever meet. I don't want her to be the girl known as the one murdered and discarded by a monster. I want everyone to know, every single person in this world, that this is my baby and my baby was taken from me. Athena's grandfather, Mark Strand, said on Facebook that despite part of him wanting five minutes alone in a cell with Tanner, he decided to listen to another part that told him forgiveness was the only way for him and his family to recover. Quote, this man I am is angry and I want five minutes alone in a cell with a psycho that took our Athena away from us. But there is a soft, gentle voice in the back of my head telling me I need to forgive him. He wrote in an emotional Facebook post. If I allow this hate to consume me, that voice will fade and eventually be silenced. Then that ugly spirit of hate will have succeeded and that's why... This gentle voice persists to tell me I need to forgive this man. End of quote.
this is more or less all the information that we have i don't want to get into all of the speculation out there because it doesn't really help at all and this is yet another case with huge media coverage and we know with that comes a lot of rumors and theories some of them unfounded there are some accounts that say including the police that athena was left in the shed by her stepmom to sort out the laundry other accounts say that elizabeth and athena were having an argument and athena left the shed however the lawsuit says that athena was playing on the driveway when she was kidnapped I also believe personally that it's possible Athena saw the delivery van arriving and maybe she went out to the driver to pick up the parcel and Tanner saw this as an opportunity or he struck her by accident. We just don't have that many details to form a complete picture of what happened. One thing I do not understand is why he did this. If Tanner indeed backed his van into Athena and she wasn't so injured that by his account he did have a conversation with her in the van, then why kill her? I mean, I do get that maybe he panicked and so on, but you know, at the very most, he would have lost his job and maybe a license suspension for some time, but Athena's life would have been saved. And now he can potentially get the death penalty, which is a huge leap from losing his job. Most importantly, Athena would be alive today. If she even told Tanner her name, that meant that she wasn't so badly injured, he could have, you know, simply just knocked on her door and explained the situation to Elizabeth or even just leave her in front of her house and simply drive away. There could have been so many things that he could have done other than what he did. And this brings me to something I'm asking myself. Did something more happen with Athena that we don't know about? And, you know, it kind of makes you think that perhaps he was trying to hide something and maybe he wasn't entirely honest with the police in his interviews. Even when he confessed to what he did, maybe he kept some things to himself as to what happened and he only said the bare minimum. I don't know, but it, it seems like, you know, it's just really strange that you just uh, by accident bump with your van into a kid the kid is fine the girl is fine and you decide that you're just gonna take her in your van and kill her i don't know to me it just doesn't make sense and i suppose that a lot more things will come out once this goes to trial sometimes i believe to be around february and honestly lastly this is such a senseless attack i just can't really get over it i just can't get over it it keeps popping into my mind the, the same question keeps popping into my mind. Why? Why did he have to do this? He could have just dropped her in front of the house and just left. I'm quite sure that Athena, she would probably not even remember his license plate number and maybe even by the time his uh, dad would get home, she would probably even forget all about it. But I have a feeling that something more happened that we just don't know about. Anyway, please guys do let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. And also, I do take a suggestion. So if you have any suggestion in particular that, uh, of a case that you want me to cover, just leave any details you have in the comment section under this video for now. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe. And again, I'm going to say Happy New Year and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.